whole is greater than the sum of the parts, so the old saying goes. But the whole is real when the parts are not. And when you've been identified with the parts, it's really difficult. You know, it's, it's unnatural to be identified with the parts. It's like having one piece of a jigsaw puzzle. That's what a personality self is like. There's a whole puzzle there, and you pull one little piece out and you go, Oh, it's fascinating. <laughs> But it's really not so fascinating as the, as the whole picture, <laughs> as the big picture. And that's what we're about, you know, we're really about relaxing, relaxing, and letting the, the picture merge together and come whole again. So, still gets handled, you know, the bills still get paid, and the, we can do travels and work on materials, and have time to chat with people who call from Pakistan, and all kinds of different places around the world, and 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 are delighted, you know, like, oh, I can't, the guy from Pakistan was like, I can't believe you're calling me in Pakistan, and I said, well, yes, why, why not, and I talked to a friend in Arab Emirates estate, you know, over in the Middle East, and she was like, oh, it's, you don't know how much meeting you changed my life, and this and this, but I, it, I, I don't want it to be too expensive, uh, you know, it's like, don't worry about it, worry. It's the joyful moment, we're rejoicing in God's love, you know, it all works out. But we, we really, I have felt, and, and all of the messengers, we try to make ourselves extremely available to the extent that we can, and all of us have had periods of time where we've lived off, gone off in si silent periods, or uh, hermitages, I've gone off to hermitages and lived in hermitages just by myself, and and those were always all valuable because it helped freeing my mind from you know thoughts and expectations and and things that felt like unfulfilled things that were really just more thoughts swirling around in there that needed to be given permission to come up and just to look at them and say, okay, these have still stress associated with them, so I'm willing to just move through this and let it let them go. And then when you do get the call to go seemingly go somewhere or do something, it's very joyful, you know, it's just like, it's like surreal almost. It's almost like you're, you're in a painting or something, like that, what dreams may come, you know, there's all these vibrant colors and happy people and, and it just whisk goes by so fast and it's like, hmm, that didn't even seem like a trip, uh, you know, come back. They make jokes about me resting after I get back from like a two month trip, they go, oh, rest. It was going to rest because I just go through all my mail and then I play with the cats and mm. then I go in my emails and start working with videos or doing something. But, you know, the, Jesus says in the Course, rest does not come from sleeping, only from waking. So mm. we're waking up and then, of course, you would feel more vibrant energy when you feel you have a calling or you feel in purpose, you have this vitality. and. That's good too, especially when you wake up in the middle of the morning and you've got all this energy and it's like, okay, Spirit, what do you want me to do? Work on a website, uh, email somebody, or nowadays it's you could even call somebody because of all the time zones, but usually everyone's sleeping, so I just wait until <laughs> 6 o'clock before <laughs> they hear me on the phone talking to these other countries or whatever. You know, it's like... But, but it's like with time zones, you pretty much could, I could get on my Skype phone and just go, oh, who's online now? What do we got? Oh, wow, over there, <laughs> Australia, that's, a, that's another day. It's already tomorrow over there. <laughs> call, call into tomorrow. I <laughs> call <laughs> 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 you, it's already gone. It's already gone, right? <laughs> You're really speaking to the past. <laughs> <laughs> My mother, my biological mother, tried. To, she's always good about sending birthday greetings, you know, on phones and everything. But when I'm over in Australia. She <laughs> a day late. <laughs> Didn't think of that time zone, that time dateline thing. <laughs> no matter how attentive you are, it's like there's always something there. So, so anyway, it's we again. We open it up for everybody. Whatever you want to talk about, any kind of topics. We're here, we're at your service um, for this weekend and also beyond, so that if you, know, you feel you need to call us and talk to us, is somebody there or somebody that can call back in a short time and we can 
do it. We seem to be able to do it across countries now with Skype and these kind of things. And on Wednesday, Cecilia and I are going to try a, a Skype conference call with 15 or 20 people from, let's be maybe Brazil and Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. So there's always new kind of things seemingly unfolding, and it's new for both of us. So we'll have to see how that goes. Yeah. I have a question. Um, you talked yesterday about that you have, and you said it was a, an excellent DVD that you had. That there's no, you have no power in the world, and you have no power over your thoughts. That you only have choice over between two things: between your right mind and your wrong mind, between the Holy Spirit and the ego, and I suppose back to thoughts again because they appear to be the most internal thing. And also you men mentioned fantasies earlier. And so we all have these ideas playing out in our heads of things that we, we don't even imagine we want or <laughs> to happen that suddenly s appear to spring into our mind. And I was just wondering if you could talk more about that because I feel I'm on the cusp of understanding my role with my thoughts as I perceive myself. But I know it's, I've probably got a, a perception problem. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. Obviously, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, throughout history, when we think about spirituality, um, there's a word that comes up over the centuries. Um, it's called temptation. So that's an interesting thing. And there's different ideas about temptation: being tempted by power, or money, or sex, or possessions, or something that seems alluring and beautiful in the world, or tastes good, or something. That's generally the context when people think about temptations. Although there's much disagreement about that, other people will say, well, that everybody <laughs> lives with temptations, you know, and tries to manage and handle the temptations the best that they can. It seems more like this management of do the best that you can with, with what you've got. But the, in the Course in Miracles, Jesus says, what is temptation but the wish to make illusions real? So that's an interesting definition. He's not talking about all those other things. He's saying, what is temptation but the wish to make illusions real? So then it's like, wow, the wish to make illusions real, it kind of fits in with what I was talking about on the deck yesterday with, there's nothing really wrong with the images of the world, even though the, the ego made them, <clears throat> the images really aren't the problem, because the Holy Spirit answered the images with the real world. You know, he completely, if, it would be like uh, <clears throat> having an, a real acidic solution in a, in a chemistry class, and then you put the Holy Spirit in and it neutralizes the acid, you know, like Tums or some of these <laughs> medicines, you know, will neutralize the acid. Well, the Holy Spirit neutralized the, the belief in separation in an instant. So it really is, it can't be that the images of the world are the problem. You know, when people say to me, even with the body, I'm so limited by this body, I've got to learn how to get rid of this body, it's more the Holy Spirit saying, well, don't, don't be so concerned about getting rid of it. Let's just work at clearing away your judgments and so that you can see the body and the world in a different light. You know, see it from a different perspective, in which there's no temptation to make the body or the world real. Because if it isn't real and you try to make it real, then that's how you get into denying love, by making up a veil and then trying to make the veil real. So as I said, the images really aren't the problem and the body is not the problem, as much as the ego will project things and say, I would have a much happier life if I didn't have to deal with this body on a daily basis, on an hourly, moment to moment basis. But the body is just so the Holy Spirit is neutral, and it's just a, a device that can be used among all the other symbols, you know, to take you to the real world.